Hi guys, it's your girl from Philly. Welcome to another episode of Handcrafted Wines where we make great wine from home the fun and easy way. Before we get started, please remember to like, share, and subscribe and click that notification bell so you don't miss any episodes. In today's episode, we're making apple hibiscus wine in the easiest way imaginable. We're going to use pre-bottled apple juice that has no preservatives in it. We're going to be using hibiscus tea or sorrel. We'll be using something different than our usual players. Today for our acid blend, we'll actually be using the juice of half a lemon and we'll also be using the zest of the lemon without the pith. For body, we'll be adding raisins today. And because we have raisins and I'd like to be able to get as much from the um, lemon rind as possible, we're going to use our pectic enzyme. We have our Dynamic Duo, which is our yeast nutrient and our yeast energizer. And of course, um, the star of our show, we have our Red Star Premier Classique. Okay, so let's get started. The very first thing that I want to do is because we're using tea and not fruit, we can use a smaller straining bag. I'm gonna take my 10, count them 10, hibiscus tea bags and put them into my straining bag. I'm also going to add at this time my lemon peel. And again, I was very careful to peel only the outer peel and not the pith. The pith would make your wine bitter. We're also going to add our raisins. And I didn't chop them up beforehand, we're going to add pectin enzymes, so that's gonna break them down a little bit for us. And we can close our bag. Now I have some water that I boiled here, and we're going to just simply steep our tea for a little bit until we see some color. And I'm gonna fill it just till we cover the bag. All right, that looks good. And I'll let that steep for a little bit until we see more of the rich hibiscus flower color. It's starting to come together now. I'm gonna start a little bit. Now hibiscus also comes in loose leaf tea or loose leaf dried flowers. In this case, I happen to purchase the already um, bagged tea, but I often use just the flowers when I'm making hibiscus tea. And I didn't prepare our sugar, so I'm gonna do that for us right now. We're going to use two and a half cups of sugar, and we'll need the whole two and a half cups because the only sugars that we actually have are what's in the apple juice. When your sugar has hardened crystals like this, you wanna break it down just to make sure that you're using the right amounts. Now there's other ways that I make apple hibiscus wine. It's actually one of my um, most favorite wines to make. I also make it with um, 
frozen concentrate apple juice, which gives it a little bit more sugar. So in, in that case, I would use maybe just two cups of sugar. All right, I actually did pretty good. This is our two and a half cups of sugar. And I won't, as I you know normally do, I test to see whether or not it's enough. I'm going to be using the full two and a half cups. And it looks like our tea is doing very, very well right now. I got some chunks in there. I'm going to have to break them up. This particular um, wine is a very, very refreshing wine. And I don't know if you know, but hibiscus, hibiscus flowers are actually very high in antioxidants. So I'm not a doctor, but it is a healthy tea. Okay, so we have all our sugars. Let's get what's in the bottom. And as always, all of my equipment has been cleaned and sanitized with Star Sand Solution. Got a little quick, a few uh, chunky pieces in there. There, we're good to go. This is actually a very easy wine to make. And we're going to stir the sugar until we don't feel any more crystals at the bottom. Because it's very hot water, it's not going to take long to um, break down all the sugar. I still feel a few crystals and we don't want that. I mentioned before in, um, in another recipe that when there are hardened crystals of sugar at the bottom and eventually as the yeast die off, they create leaves, they will cover those, that hardened sugar and the living uh, yeast won't have the opportunity to get to it. Put that there. Got a little bit of sugar on my hands. Now the next thing that I'm gonna do is juice this half of a lemon. You know, typically I use acid blend, but it enhances the flavor of this particular wine. Yeet. <laughs> Oops, to have um, acid blend. So I'm sorry, to have lemon juice. So I'll be using lemon juice instead of acid blend in this particular recipe. That looks to be about a quarter cup of lemon juice. And really give it a really good squeeze so we get it all out. which would be the equivalent of our powdered um, acid blend. So we'll add our lemon juice to it. Before I add anything else, I'm going to make sure that we um, add our apple juice so that it's a little bit cooler. I often call this tea, this wine, um, red apple hibiscus wine. I never use red apples when I make it. It's typically apple juice, but because of the um, hibiscus color, I nicknamed it red apple hibiscus. I'm gonna stop there. We may add the last bit of this juice, but I'm comfortable with this where we are right now. I'm looking for my star sand solution. There we go. I love this color. It's so 
so pretty. And the lemon juice gives it a really, really pretty scent. It smells like summertime. Okay. So that's fully incorporated. All of the sugar has been blended in. We're going to now add our pectic enzyme. And the temperature now is just about, I would say, slightly cooler than body, body temperature, which is a good starting place. This one is so simple to put together. We're almost done. I told you, wine at home is not hard. It's actually easy. It's just knowing what you're doing. Now, some people um, use, um, they'll, they'll steep the tea and then take the tea bags out. Hibiscus tea does not give you a bitter taste or an, an uber strong taste. So there's no reason why you can't let the leaves steep inside of the wine as it ferments. And if you notice, I didn't use any wine tannin. Um, hibiscus tea leaves, or hibiscus flower leaves <laughs> has, they're not leaves, they're flowers. Hibiscus flowers have lots and lots of tannins. So they also take the role of your, um, your tannin supplement. All right, we're gonna add our dynamic duo, which is our yeast energizer and our yeast nutrient. We want happy little yeast. When there's not um, proper nutrition for your yeast, you'll find that um, your yeast will get stressed out. And when they get stressed out, um, your wine has a off or funky taste to it because they weren't in a healthy condition while they were producing or reproducing. The other things that can stress your yeast are um, really high temperatures. Now, before I pitch the yeast, I'm going to do our gravity reading just to make sure that we're where we should be right now. And today I'm pretty confident that we will be. This is such a simple wine. We have to get a quick spray to our turkey baster that has been sanitized, but there's nothing wrong with having extra sanitization. Looks like cherry juice or like cranberry juice. It has that kind of color to it. My son-in-law is from Jamaica and in um, during holiday time, his family makes sorrel, which is a drink made with the tea as well as red rose wine. So delicious, so good. All right, we're almost there. I think maybe two or three more pulls will get us to our 250 milliliters. I was right on point with that third one. And we're at goal. Whoops. Baby, don't fall down. Okay. Now I'm going to take a guess because this is such an easy one. I'm going to guess that we're at 1.110. Let's see if I'm right. On my hydrometer, it hit the very um, bottom of the red line. So I'm going to tell you it's actually at 1.190 which according to my hydrometer will put us at, am I reading this right? You know, this is the hard part for me. So let me look at it again. That's a nine O. Yeah, 1.190 is where my reading is coming in at. 
I'm going to, to get the um, the conversion chart to find out exactly what the ABV for that is. I have a feeling it's going to be a little bit higher than what I was expecting. But that's okay. This will be a sweet wine, and I may not have to back sweeten it. I like to ferment till it's dry, but sometimes the yeast is just done working and there's still residual sugars inside of your batch. All right, the very last thing, I dropped the good spoon, so I'm gonna get another clean sanitized spoon. The last thing is to add our yeast. And it, it don't, they don't have to do a whole lot right now, so just leaving them there and letting them spread out and hydrating and you know, begin to start eating the yeast is a good idea. And I actually kept the, the little bit of apple juice that was left. This is probably one of our fastest wine recipes. Oh yeah, they're hydrating away. Now, one of the things I used to do when I made five gallon batches of wine is I would bloom my yeast first with a little bit of water and a little bit of sugar. And if I'm going to make a five gallon batch, I usually want to try to go ahead and bloom the yeast too first, just to make sure that it actually does work. I know this works because I've just purchased a 10 pack and all of the, the yeast in the package has been fine so far. And they're hydrating and they're starting to move around a little bit. So within 24 to, um, well, within 24 hours, you'll see uh, some actual motion with the yeast. They'll be diving up and moving around because they'll be um, eating the sugars and getting acclimated to their environment. Yep, they're moving now. So once they start to hydrate, you'll see them begin to drop to the bottom. Then they'll come back up to the top. It's kind of like, I don't know if you um, ever heard of sea monkeys, but I found out they were just brine shrimp late years later. But that's exactly what would happen when you use a sea monkey um, little pellets. You would put it in water and they would float to the top. And the next thing you know, you'd see them like dancing around the bottom. They really got over on me with that. They used to have an ad in the back of comic books for uh, sea monkeys. And I just knew I had sea monkeys. I had brine shrimp. Okay, so I'm going to fill our airlock now with our star sand solution. Oh, yeah, yeah, they're active. They're having a good time here. I'm actually enjoying making this batch because it's so clear. You can see everything that's going on inside of it. Sometimes when you have fruit in your batch, you can't really see what's going on. But this is excellent. More like a science experiment. <laughs> Oh yeah. They they do this funky thing where they, they split into, um, you know how rice looks when you overcook it, where it kind of makes like a, a chromosome shape to it, like an X chromosome. Well, the yeast do that too. So as they hydrate, they start to split off into that, that um, X uh, pattern. All right, this is enough about the yeast. <laughs> We've done everything that we need to do today. I'm going to be checking this batch on a daily basis for the first seven days. I will stir it to um, add more oxygen. Today, we didn't really do much to add oxygen because we didn't mix anything in it. So I'll be stirring in oxygen on a daily basis. We should have wine within um, seven to 14 days. Of course, this needs to age about six months to a year to be good. Because it's just a tea wine, it may be really, really good um, in a shorter period of time. But we'll find out. We'll have a taste test of this wine. Oh, they're really going at it. This is so much fun. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Enough about the yeast. It was wonderful spending some time with you. Thank you again for joining me at Philly Girl Handcrafted Wines. Remember again to like, share, subscribe, click the notification bell, tell all your friends, please help me grow this channel. I'm having so much fun doing this and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>